welcome to the UCSF Sports Medicine Podcast, Six to Eight Weeks, Perspectives in Medicine. During our program, we continue to cover a variety of hot topics in the sports medicine world and more. Welcome to the Six to Eight Weeks Podcast. This week, we're going to talk about a real surprise, and as we were talking about offline, a real just sad information that Shohei Otani, the MLB um, prior MVP re-injured his elbow over the what sounds like the last couple weeks, injuring his ulnar collateral ligament or Tommy John ligament. Um, this is the ligament on the inside of your throwing elbow that's often injured what, as a thrower. It's the most common elbow injury that they have that requires surgery. And what's particularly important is that this isn't Otani's first injury here. He had Tommy John surgery in October of 2018. He, since He's Otani. He then DH'd in 2019 and 2020 and then pitched and hit in 2021, which led to an MVP season. So right now he's thinking about what to do, getting opinions from some of the best elbow surgeons in the world, and the rest of us wait. And I think this is particularly important this year because he'll be a free agent. So this decision, uh, whether to fix the elbow, when to fix it, what to do moving forward is really important. I think it allows us um, a chance to discuss how these injuries are important both for the everyday athlete do are they the type of injury that needs surgery or is it something that is really unique for pitching and how should we be thinking about these injuries um so drew as a shoulder and elbow expert also knee expert um what is tommy john surgery and can you give us a little bit of a historical context about who tommy john was yeah, so Tommy John surgery, um, it's also known as like ulnar collateral ligament reconstruction. Um, and so the ulnar collateral ligament runs on the inside part of the elbow, the medial side of the elbow. Um, and whenever a pitcher is throwing and um, bringing their arm back, um, the elbow can have a valgus stress to where you know the hand is going behind the elbow. Um, and that loads that ligament. And then with repetitive use or with just even a traumatic one-time injury, um, you can injure that ligament. And so that's what we've seen pretty commonly in throwers, um, in overhead athletes. And um, that surgery, so Tommy John was a pitcher um, and um, Frank Job was the surgeon. Um, and this was used to be just an absolute career ender because if you don't have that ligament um, as a thrower, you can't uh, predictably generate you know, enough velocity, have enough control or throw without pain. Uh, so if this happened, um, you know, in the 50s, 60s, uh, the player was just done, career ender, and then there was no hope. Um, and Dr. Job thought, well, you know, let's try to see what we can do to reconstruct this ligament. So uh, by taking a tendon, similar to what we do with like an ACL reconstruction surgery, uh, but taking a tendon, uh, fixing it, and then recreating the function of that ligament. Um, and then Tommy John was able to get back to throwing. Um, he, you know, won over 300 games, Hall of Famer. Um, had, you know, an extraordinary career even after, you know, the surgery and the rehab, which no one had ever been able to do before. Um, so it really changed, you know, how throwers could be treated because it gave them an option for return to play after this, you know, previous, previously career ending injury. Um, and so now it's, you know, something that is done with regularity and something that we've been seeing more and more of, which is kind of the unfortunate side of it. Yeah, and I think you said we see more and more of it. I think that that can delve us way down into a rabbit hole of why we're seeing more of that. But one of the things that we have seen is in youth athletes, we do see more kids, especially in high school, who develop their first ulnar collateral ligament. And it's mainly it's an overuse injury. Is that correct? Yeah, totally. And that, um, you know, there has been an increased focus on pitch counts and, you know, how often you're throwing. And so much more attention has been brought to that. Whereas before it was just, you know, kind of throw as much as you can and, you know, if the arm hurts, push through it. And, um, you know, clearly that's not the right approach. And um, hopefully some of those efforts will um, pay off with decreased injury rates in the long term. Yeah. I think if you look at the data that started coming out, I think in the eight, late eighties and early nineties from Jimmy Andrews and the American sports medicine Institute, they really found that it was a predominant number of pitchers in little league. So these are 10, 11, 12 year olds that were pitching through pain, which is kind of crazy when you think about it, you say like, well, does your elbow hurt? Yeah, it hurts, but I want to pitch through it. So they started developing these pitch counts and these pitch counts became really important to limit the amount of injuries. And that they have shown time and again, that, that limiting pitch counts, 
uh, decreases injuries. Now, one of the things that comes up is, let's say, Drew, you're pitching to Emma and you've decided to have her play uh, Little League Baseball. Can you blow out your elbow when you're a little bit sore from medium? I know you try to strike Emma out, but are you going <laughs> to blow out your elbow as a middle-aged uh, dad pitching? I wouldn't quite consider myself middle age, but um, no, like that kind of throwing, um, it would be hard to, you know, reach the forces that are needed to injure the UCL. Um, and, you know, this is usually like, you know, max effort, you know, trying to, you know, put just as much force as you can. If you're just, you know, kind of tossing the ball around, unlikely to have that type of injury. Okay. Yeah. Emma says your fastball is not that fast. So I think it's probably, that's okay. probably true too. Yeah. Cause I think we get, especially in the spring um, and when little league starts, we get dads coming in saying, well, my elbow really hurts. Cause I pitched 200 pitches to my kid and you, you have to kind of talk them down. You don't need a Tommy John. You're not going to pitch faster to your kid. Your elbow is just a little bit sore. Yeah. But that brings up another question is, well, we often hear that when you have Tommy John surgery, pitchers are going to come back better and faster at the major league level. Is that true? No, um, unfortunately not. And actually, you know, I think uh, one good example is a paper that you and I wrote um, a few years ago now, but we looked at their um, stat cast, their pitch velocity specifically for fastballs. And when the pitchers returned, their average fastball velocity was just a little bit lower. It wasn't that much lower, but there's always that common perception that ah, you get your Tommy John and you just come back stronger and better. Um, and what we saw was, you know, people lose, you know, a half mile an hour, which can be significant, but they're certainly not getting a performance boost off of it. Yeah, I think the other thing that was really interesting in that paper that's been shown in other papers too is what their pitching changes. So their yeah. pitch type changes and they start – they throw almost as hard, but they don't max out their velocity the same and they're throwing different numbers of pitches. And I think, you know, one of the things that often comes up too is that, well, it's, this is really a unique injury to pitchers. So, you know, we had Brock Purdy, but that was a contact injury. So he injured the same ligament, but that's because he was hit in the elbow. You don't get this right. blowing out your elbow, throwing a football because the mechanics are different. All right. So talking about Shohei Otani, he's obviously he's a two-way player. He's a amazing player. He's also, I think it falls under the radar, but he's tied for the league lead in home runs as well. He's, as of now, he's got 44 home runs. Um, but he's had some other issues this year. You know, he's had some muscle cramping. He had a uh, fingernail injury. He had a blister. Do you think these played a role or do you think it's more that he had a reconstructed elbow five years ago and he pitches a lot? Yeah, I think, you know, it's hard to say without you know, evaluating and talking to him, the muscle, like the cramping, fatigue, the pain, those can be signs of, you know, ligament insufficiency. Um, I think the blisters are probably unrelated, but um, I think the, those other symptoms that he was feeling, they might've been, you know, kind of a warning that this was happening. Yeah. I was wondering though, kind of like when you think about that part needs to be deleted. Um, I, I was thinking about when the when you have a pitcher that's changing their mechanics ever so slightly to avoid the cracked fingernail or to avoid the blister, is that enough for an elbow at risk to kind of put them over the edge? And I think we see this probably more than we realize, and we just don't have the metrics to really pick yeah. it up, that when you have an athlete that is really trying to pitch at that top 0.001% and they just can't get there, maybe it is the blister that sends it over the edge, or maybe it is that you've just changed your grip enough that that puts the extra five Newtons of force. But obviously, like you said, we'll never know. Right. Um, so having one Tommy John surgery isn't the end of the world. And it looks like it, when you look at the literature, a vast majority of pitchers get back. Um, and, but I think one of the important things is we probably don't really see the kids that are under 18 that have Tommy John surgery and then can't get back. So we're seeing the elite of the elite and we say, oh, it's not that big of a deal. They can get back. But what about that second Tommy John surgery? Is that a bigger deal? How likely is it that if he has this surgery, he's able to come back? Yeah. And it, anytime you have that second surgery, um, 
I think it becomes even harder to, you know, recover to that same elite, you know, highest level of sport. Um, and what we've seen, it's like about 10% of pitchers end up um, returning to play after revision Tommy John surgery. Um, in, or, sorry, we should uh, scrap that. Um, so what we've seen is uh, about 10% will have uh, re-injury after um, ulnar collateral ligament reconstruction. And then of those players, um, it's about like 60 to 80% that are able to return to play. Um, so it's lower, uh, but then you also, you know, you think about that second surgery is going to be in an older person, um, you know, by nature, they've had to, you know, have some time between the, the first and the second. Um, and then, you know, just going through another rehab recovery uh, might be the tail end of their career anyway. So some of that has to be factored into interpreting those numbers, but it's, it's lower. It's not as predictable, but um, still can be done. Yeah, I think this really brings up an interesting part, too. You could just say he's potentially the best hitter in the majors. Right. Why not just have him not pitch? So I'm going to put you on the spot here. You are now the new general manager of the Las Vegas A's. They have moved. You've got a new stadium. It's air conditioned. It's gorgeous. <laughs> Otani has decided his family wants to come to Vegas. How would you manage his workload his first year back? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, one thing is he is so unique with how good he is as both a hitter and a pitcher because uh, he's essentially, you know, like one of the best players at both positions. Um, and so he, you know, his contributions as a hitter are still going to be just off the charts. Um, and then the other thing to remember with him is he is a left-handed hitter. Um, and when you're batting, your back arm will have some valgus stress. And so, you know, if you are a left-handed hitter and a left-handed thrower, so that's going to be your left hand that's going to have more valgus, and then the right hand will be the, uh, the opposite direction, like more of a varus stress. But so he's a right-handed thrower, left-handed batter. Um, so his right elbow is relatively protected while he's batting, which is, you know, really good for him. Um, and, you know, I think in looking towards his future, I would – think, you know, I would give him a chance to come back as a pitcher. Um, and then even if he isn't able to fully recover in that role, um, you know, I would anticipate he could still perform at his level as a hitter. Um, he could still DH, he could still, you know, be a power hitter. He's, you know, faster than anybody. He's just all around like an amazing athlete. But, um, you know, I wouldn't, you know, have any concern with performance on that side of it. And then I think it, to look towards workload, um, you'd have to see how he's coming back and like, you know, what his velocity looks like, what his, what his elbow feels like to him. Like, does he feel like he's, you know, getting back to where he was and um, would definitely keep a close eye on how much he's throwing in the first year. Um, and then, you know, if he's able to build up the endurance and do it without pain, then, um, you know, would see where he's able to go with it. Yeah, I think it's it'll be really interesting. And I think our producer, Andrew uh, Gatto, looked up uh, some interesting stats. And I think one of the interesting stats after a revision is because you think about this, well, how about just convert him to relief pitcher? He's got he's got a good fastball. He's very accurate. But when you look at two years after these limited number of page, uh, patients, uh, pitchers that come back with a revision Tommy John surgery, the highest likelihood of decline are in strikes and strikeouts. So you think, okay, well, if we convert him to a relief pitcher, that's really what you want with your relief pitcher, somebody that's going to throw strikes. You don't want somebody walking more batters or having a lower likelihood of striking people out. So it may be that he continues to be a starter. He is obviously one of those unique athletes, but it may also be something that he goes into middle relief. You get three or four good innings, especially have a lot of teams have transitioned to that middle pitcher is potentially one of the most important people. And that allows a little bit more flexibility um, the other thing I wonder moving forward is how much you really pay attention to those subtle findings that when yeah. a pitcher starts complaining about the finger problems, the 
um, cramping. Is that really a warning sign that the mechanics are changing? I think a lot of the motion capture stuff that we're just starting to be able to see work on the velocity of somebody throwing, whereas we can kind of use motion capture to look at somebody slowly jumping down or doing a controlled movement, but we can start using it to really fine tune when a pitcher is at risk. Hopefully those sort of technologies will be able to brought, be brought forward in the next few years. All right, so um, what do you think happens next? Do you think he has surgery? Do you think he continues playing for the year? And when is he coming to the Giants? So I'll bet he continues to, um, you know, DH for the rest of the year. Because, um, yeah, like he's so exciting in that regard, has so much value there. Um, and then I think, you know, he's still in the process of getting the elbow further evaluated. Um, I would you know, anticipate if he has surgery, it'll probably be this off season. Um, and then, you know, at, if he had surgery in late fall, early winter, then, um, you know, could probably be back batting at least towards the beginning of year. Um, and then, um, you know, looking towards like at least a full year before he's back throwing. So, uh, would probably anticipate no pitching next year, but then, you know, back for the following season and, um, uh, you know, ready to go. Yeah, certainly lots to think about him, lots to think about for him and his the medical staff for the Angels and, you know, eventually the Giants when he decides right. to come to San Francisco. Um, thank you so much for joining us, Drew. Um, check us out at 6 to weekspodcastcom If you have questions or comments, please let us know or let us know what other topics you want us to cover. Thanks for listening to the UCSF Sports Medicine Podcast, 6 to 8 Weeks, Perspectives in Medicine. What do you think of this topic? Connect with us now. In addition to finding our contact form, you'll also find our social media links in our entire six to eight weeks episode archive. Help us grow our listenership by liking, subscribing, and sharing everywhere. We're eager to hear from you, and we'll be sending you more great thought-provoking content in less than six to eight weeks.